Hi everyone, my name is Daryl. So if you're in the market for a used GTR, one of the most important things that you can do is to check out the transmission. I recently got the opportunity to sit down with Jack McGee, owner of Jack's Transmissions, to talk about what kinds of things that you should look for if you're inspecting a used GTR in regards to the transmission. So pay close attention to all the knowledge that Jack got to share so that you don't end up buying a used GTR with a Trast transmission. It's nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet thanks you. for reaching out. Uh, typically when YouTubers reach out, they want stuff for free or, oh, you know, there's yeah. always a cost to it. And I was like, eh, I, I just don't do that anymore. Yeah, but yeah. you just reached out and you didn't ask for anything. So. <laughs> you didn't know I was going to bring my GTR down tomorrow, did you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we'll just do the, the common issues we see and how, okay. how, to, how to detect it. Okay. Like if you're looking to buy a car or something. Yes, yes, like absolutely. Common, common things we found that will kill the trans that's in a tune or whatever. Okay. Um, all the way up to common issues that might creep up that maybe you can check for. And, and just the common problems in general, if, okay. if you want to go that far. Right? So, no, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The GR6 likes to talk to you. Um, so it, it'll tell you a lot about what's going on. Um, you know, and if what you're doing is upsetting it where it's going to damage something in the future. Um, so the most common issue that we found on an aging platform like this is pressure sensors. And if it still has the OEMs in there at, a, at above 180 F, um, the car will feel a little weird and then it'll trip, you'll lose gears and that's it. So if you're looking to buy a car, definitely make sure the transmission oil temp and that center like infotainment display is on Okay. and you get it over 180 F. What I found is here in Colorado, it gets cold too. I just ha I just have to do my rounds. I have this area that's safe. There's no other cars or anything. I'll I'll hit it one two three. Do a U-turn one two three. Do a U-turn one two three. You know full throttle. Uh -huh. I'll have to do that a few times. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. if you sit around in traffic, it, it goes up pretty quick. You know, is the owner going to let you do that? Yeah. Pro probably not. But I'd be willing to bet, even if it's fairly cold out, if you do some city traffic driving, okay, it'll get up there. It'll okay. get over 180. The the I mean, that would show up on a, on a PPI or something like that, right? If it went into limp mode, right, there would be something somewhere that would indicate that uh, the transmission went into limp mode, wouldn't there be? Yes, uh, okay. but unfortunately, the TCM does not know how to communicate the issue. Okay. So they will see a code for like a solenoid. Hi, everyone. So for each of Jack's recommended tests that we do in regards to the transmission, I'm going to break away from the interview and I'm going to do the test myself on my GTR. I'm gonna see what kind of shape my transmission is. And it'll also give you a chance just to see kind of what the test looks like when you're doing it in a GTR. So the first test is the transmission pressure uh, sensor test. And on that test, you're gonna to wanna to have the oil temperature of the transmission up to 180 degrees. Now, I'm not there yet. I'm at 172 degrees. So I've had it warmed up for about 20 minutes or so, and then I've kind of done some filming and stuff since that point. So I'm gonna do a little more driving um, just to get to the freeway. And then once I get the freeway, I'll go ahead and turn the camera back on to try to get it to run at temperature for about 20, 25 minutes or so. Now you might have a seller, you know, kind of not be at all that interested in that, but just tell them up front, you know, that this is the test that you're going to do. Um, and, you know, it's a test that's really important. This is the number one failures on GTRs. So you wanna make sure that you're not having that problem on the GTR that you're considering purchasing. All right, guys, we're on the freeway. So we're gonna do a little run here. Okay, just wanted to get the, um, get it up to temp a little bit. Oh, going way too fast there. <laughs> But I basically want to keep it, keep it on a gear, and keep that transmission going, and try to get it really up to temp. So I've got it 181 right now. Got it 186.
Okay, so what do we got now? We got it at 190, so we don't quite have it to 200 yet, but we're pretty close. It's really cold today. It's actually like in the 40s, and with the, just the series of tests that I've done, um, didn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes or so, and I've got my oil temperature already up to, uh, um, for the transmission, up to 197 degrees. And so with a thorough test drive, you really shouldn't have issues getting the oil temperature up to temp. The other issue to know that, that these cars are getting some miles on them and they're getting a little bit older that the car will tell you about is uh, the front drive system, the ETS system. So the best way to look at how the, the like, all-wheel drive uh, works in these cars is it's not really all-wheel drive. What it is, is it's a rear-wheel drive car with front-wheel assist. So when the system detects a, a little bit of wheel spin in the back, um, it'll, it's got a series of clutches that engage and disengage torque to the front wheels. Um, the ETS can wear very quickly if you have a careless driver at the wheel. Um, so one of the things you need to watch out for, and again, it, it'll tell you, it'll talk to you if you're being too abusive with it, is if you're on a road where you either launch it or go full throttle in first gear and the rear tires start to spin, the ETS will clamp down as hard as it can and send as much torque as it can to the front wheels to combat that, to help pull okay. the car along. But what a lot of people will do, and it's just due to them, just they just don't know, is they'll stay on the throttle, you know, with like VDC off, you know, trash control off. They'll stay on the throttle and keep spinning the tires. And the ETS will stay fully clamped and it'll keep trying with, you know, with no success to send power to the front wheels. Um, and it, it can't catch up. Eventually, if you spin too much and you have too much power going through, you know, the, the amount of torque it sends to the front is not very much. And it eventually it hits its limit and it, it'll just stay clamped the whole time you're, you're doing your burnout basically at that point because the front drive isn't doing anything. And when the, the clutch plates are clamped at full load like that, they're, they're turning, they're generating friction. So they're fully clamped down, generating a ton of friction in a very small environment that immediately the tank just goes through the roof immediately. Um, so the fluid will burn, the plates will burn um, in very quick fashion. Is there some sort of way for a potential owner to know that the ETS has kind of gone bad or it's in, in bad shape? Open up uh, what's called torque split in your center infotainment display. Okay. And there's like a gauge there that goes up and down. Okay. So one of the really quick ways to see if, if the ETS is, is actually working I mean, it may not be working great, but at least working is go to a parking lot, like a large open parking lot where there's nothing around. Drive the car like probably 10, 15 miles an hour. Okay. And look at the torque split gauge. Okay. Let okay. off the gas and let the car coast. Okay. And then turn the wheel sharply. Do a really sharp U-turn uh, with the car. And if you turn it and that torque split gauge is down to zero, and you turn it and you feel the tire scuffing, Okay. that means that the plates are dragging and they're not letting go. There's there's too much friction there. It won't turn efficiently. You'll feel the tire scuff as you turn and you'll feel resistance. Like you'll turn in a car and almost like you're hitting the brakes. Really? So okay. That's one way to do it. Okay. If it does that, great. That's that's one way to check it. Okay. So then you, you, you stop, keep the, the wheel turn, make a full stop, and then if you hit the throttle um, just normally, like you're accelerating normally, you'll actually see the torque split gauge go up. Okay. If when you see the torque split gauge go up and the tires begin to scuff, that means it's locking. That means it's it's creating friction and it's working. Okay. So by doing those two tests in a parking lot, you'll be able to tell if the, cl if the clutches are engaging and disengaging. Okay. If they are, then that's excellent. That's That's the first part of checking the ETS system that is, is pretty important to do. I've seen cars with less than 20,000 miles with a dead ETS. So it's really important to make sure the ETS works properly. Another way uh, to do that is just get on a surface that isn't great. Um, you know, it's not a nice, clean asphalt surface. Maybe it's got, you know, some 
some dirt and stuff on it and just just mat the throttle in first gear through that if the car just goes rah, 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 you know it's just like bouncing off the limiter and the rear tires are spinning and you're not going anywhere the ets is weak it's mm-hmm. not not transferring the power to the front that it should and it's not basically helping pull you along all of that hmm. so that's another way to do it too and of course if somebody's riding with you and you do that they'll probably freak out but i i think those tests are necessary because the ets system is so easy to destroy all right so we're going to do the ets all-wheel drive system so we're going to make sure that it's working the way it should and so as jack recommended what we're going to do is we're going to go about 15 miles an hour um, and we're going to make a quick u-turn and as we're doing that we're going to make sure that we don't we aren't depressing on the gas pedals we're basically just letting it coast and when it does that no torque should be going to those front wheels at all and it should be open and free and there should be in no sort of um juggery or any kind of um things going on with the front wheel so let's go ahead and and get that done so i'm gonna go ahead and get started here and here we go okay so i got it going about 15 miles an hour or so and here we go Yeah, so that was pretty good. Going a little faster than what I thought, but yeah, everything was fine there. All right, so we're gonna do the second test now, which is basically we're going to accelerate with the wheel turned, just kind of normal acceleration. Um, you should see the torque split and it should go to the front wheels. And as we're doing that and as we're turning relatively harshly and as we're accelerating, you should feel some sort of almost like it's braking, almost like we're kind of running over something. So let's see if that's what we end up getting. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so that felt to me pretty much just like the other run. So I am not sure, I'm not certain that there isn't anything going on with my ETS system. Um, I'm gonna talk to Jack a little bit about it, see if I can test it any other another way um, i do have another test coming up which is um, where we accelerate um, and in first gear kind of in an unlevel surface not a great surface so we'll try that and uh, hopefully maybe my ets system i think will work a little better there but yeah i might have some issues so for my last test for the ets um, jack recommended that we kind of do a full throttle run from first gear and here we go So basically, um, what we are looking for, and I actually had the, um, so I had the uh, traction control not off, but I had it in race mode, just so that I could get some wheel slip. And so yeah, it slipped a little bit, and then it just grabbed. Um, and so it did just exactly like I was expecting. The front wheel drive kind of took over a little bit and gave me some traction, and so that did just what I wanted it to do. So to check for clutch coning, clutch coning means that, that the, the, the plates warp, they look like a cone. What I've noticed is, is if you're coming to a stop in um, transmission manual mode, okay, don't downshift. Like have it like, you know, cruise along like in third gear, don't touch the paddles, come to okay. a stop. Okay. And again, it again, the transmission loves to talk to you. In the center infotainment display, you have your, your pressure, your transmission pressure, if you watch that, when you come to a stop and it tries to <coughs> engage uh, first gear, if it has a problem engaging first gear due to clutch drag, like a clutch problem, you'll see that um, that line or that uh, pressure, like you'll get a blip anytime a transmission shifts, okay. but you'll see okay. the pressure go up and hold as you're coming to a stop. It'll hold and it may stop and then try again and if it keeps doing that, that means it's struggling to engage the gear, and there may be a potential you know, synchro or clutch problem. When you're coming to a stop on a healthy trans, you'll see the pressure blip up. You should see it go blip up, and then you should hear a clunk out of the trans. Right. You should see it go up, and then hear it like, and then that's it. 
All right, for this next test, we're gonna test the clutch and for any sort of synchro issues. And with this one, we need to be in manual mode. So I'm gonna switch it to manual mode. You're gonna wanna get it up to like third gear. Um, and it's gonna downshift. You think it's gonna downshift to second, but in reality, it is downshifting to second, but as it's doing that, it's actually switching to first gear, so it's ready to um, select that gear, and you're gonna hear like a little bit of a clunk. Now, when it's doing that, um, you're gonna actually see the transmission oil pressure. It'll bump up and then come back down again, and it should be a very um, slight bump, um, so let's make sure that that does what we think it should do. Now, it's kind of hard to see uh, to be watching all the screens. And so you, you actually might want to have the driver uh, do this, um, the seller do this, and then you can just kind of watch. Um, but here we go. Okay, so we're in third and we're going to slow down. Okay, bump. Yep, second. Now it's actually in first gear, but you saw that transmission oil pre pressure bump up and now you slow down again. And now we're in first. And so you heard those clunks. That's just a normal thing that the GTR does. And you saw each time it changed the gear um, that that transmission oil pressure went up just a little bit, bumped up, and then came right back down, which is what you want. I, um, I did another video on the GTR and I think it was, I think it was just what me and my wife did a review of the GTR. You know, I was, you know, talking about the, you know, the clunk that you hear because I was just driving through the parking lot and stuff like that. And there was a guy, he was like, that clunk is not normal. And I'm like, dude, it's done uh, that. Yeah. yeah, I was like, it's done that since I bought the car brand new. So it, that's one of the things I love about that car. It's it's very mechanical and raw as like an Osbergery, you know, engineering mentality type guy like myself. <laughs> I love that. You know, the refined PDKs and the Porsches and stuff, uh -huh. they're so refined and they're so nice. I, I I hate that. It's like so boring, you know. I want to hear it. I want to hear it be clumsy. You know, I want to hear it struggle a little bit. You know, it's just it's just the way they are. You well, know? you know, and and I, I think that's the attraction for a lot of people with that car. But you know what's funny about it though is that, you know, when you're, you know, when you're just kind of cruising around town and you're not on it, it is clumsy. It's clunky and clumsy, and it, you know, the gear shifts aren't refined. But then when you're when you get on it, you know, then all of a sudden the whole nature of the car changes and it just, it, you know, it, all of a sudden it's, you know, it's just making those shifts so fast and so clean. You're like, wow. GR6 talking to you again. If you have a lot of material in your oil, a lot of metal, uh, your line pressure gauge at idle will slowly get lower and lower and lower because the line pressure solenoid that regulates that pressure is extremely sensitive to material in the trans. It'll build up inside that solenoid and it won't be able to pulse and engage uh, like it used to, open the valve to, to regulate the pressure like it used to. And it gets, as material builds up, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker and your pressure gets lower and lower and lower. Hmm. So if you find that your line pressure at idle when the car is fully warmed up, if it's getting really close to the red on okay. the low side, it could mean you have material in the tram. All right, so this is a real easy one to check. So as Jack said, um, whenever we have kind of excessive materials in the transmission oil and that those materials get kind of clogged up into the system, what you're gonna see is reduced pressure um, from the transmission oil pressure. And so what you want it is you want it up to gear. We're at 172. And so I think that's probably good enough. And I've got it in park and it's idling. And you can see the transmission oil pressure. It's at least two um, um, check marks above the low mark. And so, yeah, I think we're okay there. It's right in, it's not quite in the middle. I'm not sure what average is. I've got to call out to Jack to see what where it actually should be sitting, but I think it's sitting in a really good spot. So getting back to um, the clutch operation, so when you engage, you go from third gear to fourth gear, what it does is it's, it's already shifted there. It already has a pre-selected. When you hit that paddle and it shows that number three to number four, it's not shifting to that gear. It's already got that gear selected. What's happening is, is the clutch that's engaged in third gear will let go 
and then the clutch for the even gears will engage. And that's called a crossover. So when you cross over from one clutch to another, it should be almost seamless. You should feel a little bit, but it shouldn't be harsh. Right. If on a lot of tunes, a, a lot of tuners out there do not like to spend the time to make clutch crossover smooth and, um, how should I put it, uh, and, and non-aggressive. Um, so if you're test driving a vehicle or if you're driving a vehicle now, and when you go shift from one gear to another, if you feel the car, if you feel that shock, it's always the shock that kills everything. If you feel the car jerk, you know, you go to engage the gear, it goes, boom, and you shift to the next gear, boom, it does that. These wet clutches and these cars, I don't care how many plates it is, how aggressive it is, it does not need to do that. Mm -hmm. So you got to be really careful if you're looking to buy one. That crossover, how harsh that feels, will give you a pretty good idea um, if things are under a lot of stress or not. Hmm. So I hope that makes I hope that makes sense. All right. So for my last test, I basically want to check that clutch crossover just to make sure that. There's not a lot of harsh engagement when going from first to second or from second to third. So I've got it in, in manual mode and I'm in our race mode too on the transmission. So it'll be a little bit more aggressive than normal. Yeah, so yeah, for the most part, just really, really super smooth. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's not set. You know, this is, of course, this is an unmodified car. And so, yeah, I wouldn't expect this to be harsh at all. Um, but, you know, you don't really want it to be too harsh. Any sort of shock to the transmission um, is really not what you want to see. Um, if you want your transmission to last longer, um, I would recommend never using transmission R mode on the street uh, because the gear prediction is pretty aggressive on that and you're wearing your transmission out without even knowing it. <laughs> um, so with gear prediction mode, so in normal mode, when you're driving, if you're in third gear, it pre-selects fourth, it always pre-selects next gear higher. So if you have the transmission in R mode, <coughs> what happens is, it's like you're in third gear, if you let off the throttle, it'll engage second. It'll <laughs> pre-select second gear. So the synchronizer, shift fork, everything is moving to second gear. And then when you get on the throttle and you begin to accelerate, the system's like, oh, you're probably going to want to upshift from third, so it'll engage fourth and pre-select it. And if you're just driving down the road normally, it could be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all the time. So the synchros, fork, everything is working. So, you know, shift solenoids, everything, always working back and forth all the time. Huh. So our mode is is is... It's not going to wear it out completely in short time or anything, but it's more the transmission has to do. Yeah, you sure. know, so it's going, to, it's going to wear more quickly. So people that when they get in their car and you see it all the time in videos, they immediately just push it up in the R and they're sure. just driving around normally. Yeah, yeah, normal. sure. they're, they're wearing their trans out prematurely. So in addition to the tests that Jack recommended, there's been two other tests that I've seen relatively consistently on YouTube. And the first one is you want to do this with the engine cold and so pretty much right when you get to the inspection you're going to want to do this one and basically what you're going to do is switch between park and first gear multiple times and so right now i'm going to put it in park and then i'm going to switch to first i'm going to go back to park again then i'm going to go back into first and you, you see there's a smooth transition between park and first. It had no problem selecting first gear. So what you're looking for is if it hesitates and let's say instead of switching from first, it switches to second, or if a gear indicator light comes on, that means that it had a problem switching into first gear and you've got some sort of a transmission issue. And so yeah, that's probably something you're gonna wanna stay away from. All right, so the second test that we're gonna do is we're gonna check the clutch just another way. So what you wanna do is when you're in first gear, um, you're gonna wanna have your foot on the brake and just slowly release the brake. And you're going to 
feel the clutch engage and start to grab the gear. And you're gonna wanna listen really closely for any sort of marbly sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Let me do it again. Okay, so it fully engages the gear. Now, this is the sound that you don't want to hear. All right, so now that we know kind of what sounds okay and what doesn't sound so good, let's go ahead and give our thanks to Jack and let me send it back to the, to the interview. You know, thank you so much, Jack, for oh, yeah. you know, sharing your expertise and wisdom with us in regards to the GTR GR6 transmissions. I really appreciate the time and your patience with me and you know, providing you know, all the little nuggets of information um, to um, potential new owners. That's, that's really great. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's, it's no problem. And I, I think we just barely scratched the surface. There's so much <laughs> more I'd be willing to share, you know, so okay. just, just let me know if this works out for you and okay. if people like it. Uh, I, I don't mind this kind of okay. stuff. I, I, I enjoy doing this too. It's, okay. it's, it's quite fun. So, okay. Well, okay. thanks so much, Jack, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too. Thanks, Daryl. Have a good okay. one. Okay. You too. Bye. So that's it for Jack's interview. If you want to watch the full uninterrupted version of the interview, it'll be available on the end screen once it's published. I really appreciate Jack taking the time to share his knowledge with us. And if you would do me a favor and bump the like button, if not for me, then for Jack, because the knowledge he shared with us really deserves a wider audience. And by liking this video, you really help make that happen. I do have more videos coming out with Jack because he covered so much content. And please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of that content that's coming up. And I really hope to see you in the next one again very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago.